Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ill Factor from BDAcademy.com. And in this video, I'm gonna be recreating Odessa's sun models. And I wanna share some music production tips and techniques along the way. So let me show you the end result. So this is a really cool track to break down, a lot of cool nuances that I wanna share with you. So be sure to watch to the end of the video because I got a special gift for you at the end. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, one thing I like about Odessa's productions is the use of organic elements balanced and combined with some of the synthetic stuff that you can hear. And they just do it in such a great way that comes up with a unique sound at the end of the day. And hopefully what I can share with you in this breakdown video are tools that you can utilize and use in your productions that'll help you achieve not just similarly the same results, but can inspire you to take your next step with your music. So let's focus in on the marimba sound. Pretty straightforward, any marimba patch that you might have will work. So in this case, I'm gonna use the Native Instruments Contact uh, Factory Library marimba patch here. So in the factory library that comes stock with uh, Native Instruments Contact, just going into the VSL per percussion and looking for the marimba. And let's go ahead and take a listen to the chords. You also wanna pay, uh, pay attention to velocity. Velocity in these type of instruments do play a big role in the way certain notes will be accented. So make sure that the accent or the notes don't all have the same exact velocity. This is a great way to add life back into some of these organic elements. You see how that one note became accented and louder than the other? So I wanna make sure that they're relatively in the same place, but that there's a nice fluctuation between the notes in the chords, they're, that they're not all set with the same velocity. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. Then when I listen to the reference, it's got some vinyl texture to it. So immediately my mind jumps to Excellent Audio um, using the RC20 plugin. So I'll go ahead and use that. And this already by default set to the vinyl mode. And just cranking up some of the distort there as well. Cool thing too, is I went ahead and recreated, you know, trying to get the similar results just using Ableton stock plugins. And I've created a Ableton um, audio instrument rack that will kind of emulate the same process here. So creating some noise, some wobble, distortion. So just to, let me just demonstrate that. I'll use some of the noise here. Let's turn the dry and wet up. All right, so now let's go ahead and layer the marimba sound with a nice pluck type of sound. So I'm gonna use the Ableton Live wavetable for this and just click and drag that. And let's start with a sawtooth waveform here. And let's just hold the option key to drag the same chord progression down and solo that. That's a little too bright. So in order to create the pluck, we need to have our envelope assigned to the frequency cutoff and determine how quickly that's going to open and close. So to do that, let's head over here to the matrix, click on frequency, the cutoff, and assign that to envelope two. Now, depending on the value, the number value you give to this determines how much uh, the envelope will have an influence on that cutoff. So let's just start with that 47, see what that does. Let's bring the, the frequency cutoff down and start shaping envelope two. So let's bring the sustain down and the release down and start messing around with the decay. Okay, now we'll go to our amp envelope, which shapes the overall body of the, the sound. So let's bring our release down. Now 
That's cool. It's getting a little plucky there. So I'll turn on oscillator two and leave that to a sine wave. And just mix that down a little bit. Um, could probably have that go an octave lower. And we can give this a little bit of unison. So I'll go to classic and detune this globally. Now, what I'd like to do is have this gradually open up so it gets nice and bright. It goes from this pluck to this bright pad that we had before we started adding uh, the envelope and the cutoff and, and things like that. So just by right-clicking on that cutoff frequency, just hit Show Automation, and then let's just draw our automation points here, and we'll do that so it gradually opens up. So then I might want to adjust the release so that we've got that not nice lasting uh, notes holding over while it's opening up. So I might want to automate that as well. So we might start the plucks short. And as we start to get, as we gradually open up the cutoff frequency, let's go ahead and open the release as well. So those notes are just staying sustained and they're overlapping uh, one another. All right, now let's go ahead and focus in on the drums. So I've been using XLN Audio's XO, which is an amazing plugin that allows you to map certain locations on your hard drive, certain folders that might contain drum samples, uh, loops, and things like that. And it will categorize them and break it into this map. And as you can see here, you can just simply click and drag your mouse uh, through this map to browse for certain sounds. Which lately has been really cool and inspiring for me, uh, rather than just going to certain bookmarks and scrolling through folders, this has been cool to stumble across certain sounds. And I visually can see that everything here in pink is ten tends to be claps or, or things in that nature. And I can search and filter out by specific uh, sounds. So if I just wanted to focus on claps, it will highlight all the ones on the map that are just clap samples. And once I find something that I like, just simply click and add it to the slot over here. And if you wanted to browse for maybe something that was a little bit similar sounding to that sample, you can then go down here and just browse to the sounds that are similar to the sample that you've located. So lately, this has been a really helpful thing for me to just kind of get inspired and come across sounds that I normally won't stumble across while going through my bookmark folders. So definitely wanted to capture some claps here. So I have these claps just by browsing these, adding them on here. And by the way, you can also just click and drag and drop this onto your DAW just by simply hitting the option key and dragging that over. It'll locate the file on your hard drive and drag it into your DAW. Now, um, so it can be used as a sequencing tool or just somewhat of a cool browser. So what I've done is once I had my sounds here, I've got a kick, the clap here, a couple other elements. Once I've got them in place, I can individually route these sounds, such as the kick drum. I can go here, click, and route that out to bus one. So then I can go ahead and create an audio track in Ableton Live set the input monitoring to in, and make sure that the input is coming from XO, which is track two, and bus one. So that's where the kick and my clap, they're coming in through an individual audio track so that I can use any processing that I'd like. Um, so here is the pattern. You might notice I'm slightly nudging this note so I've got these two claps. I've got one slightly nudged over. It's a great way to create that nice flam effect so that it just feels, uh, it doesn't feel as tight and you get a nice uh, looser performance from that. And so then I'm layering this with a, another snare drum right here. And then we have these clap loops. So this is just a browsing through my hard drive, trying to find some loops. So let me focus on the claps.
Now it's just about finding something that is similar to the rhythm that I hear in the reference. Um, so whether I'm getting them from Splice or any other um, sound source, I wanna make sure that the loops also fit in a good pocket rhythmically. So I group these two clap tracks together and I have a compressor on the grouped clap channel and it's going to be side chained by the kick drum. So every time the kick hits or you hear the kick, it's ducking the claps out of the way. So without it, it just helps really have these loops fit in the pocket better with the drums. So let's go ahead and solo the whole drum bus. And now let's help glue this all together with using some saturation. So I'm using the Ableton Live Saturator. And I have it set to medium curve. And that's really gonna help just give some nice drive to that. Um, so just about two dB of drive, then doing some slight compression here. Make sure that the soft clip is on. So this is gonna act somewhat as a limiter on this compressor. And then I'm using mid side EQing on this drum. So don't let me do that. But for this one, I wanted the, um, the, the the high mids to get more of a, I wanted to send them to the side signal. I wanted them to, to be accented a little bit more on the side. Now, when it comes to mid side, think of it as that, exactly that. The sound that you're getting in the middle, right? The mid versus the sounds that you're getting on the side, the imaging on the side, right? So with the mid side here in Ableton Live Stock or any EQ that has this option, you just go click from stereo to mid side. You can interchangeably go from the mid signal. What is it that you're hearing in the mid? So if I scooped all the lows out of here, you hear all that side information, the stereo with side information. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to the side information and I don't want a lot of the low end that I'm getting from that kick there. So that's why I'm just kind of scaling that back a little bit. And I'm accenting, I'm boosting up a little bit of the high mids so that it's not present in the middle, but just feels wider on the side. So this is without the EQ. It, it makes the claps feel wider when they're not essentially really that much wider. I'm just, I'm, I'm focusing on the clap frequency here and boosting that up with some side, mid side EQing to make the claps feel wider. Definitely wanna try that and see what results you get in your productions. All right, now let's focus in on creating some of the backing pads that we can hear throughout the track. And these are great elements to add in your production that really help glue and bridge the gaps together from drums and other instrumentations you might have. So let's go back to the wavetable here in Ableton Live and let's go ahead and listen to the chords. So we wanna create something that's a bit darker, not as bright. So I'm definitely not gonna start with the sawtooth or a square. And we'll probably start with leaving it at a sine wave. And let's lower the free filter frequency a little bit. Now, one way to really shape this into a pad-like sound is by starting by adjusting the amp envelope. Let's give it a slow start. So we'll exaggerate that. And then we'll give it a long tail here by uh, opening up the release. And just adjusting those two parameters to taste. And then to help widening it up, let's go from the unison and hit classic. And then we can go ahead and bring that cutoff frequency down and let's put another oscillator too. To give some body and depth to this, we'll still use a sine wave, but let's go an octave lower for this oscillator. So negative 12 semitones. The magic of this pad really comes into that amp envelope, the slow attack and the long release. That's the body of this pad here. And so we can add some depth and some atmosphere with using some delays and reverb. So I'm gonna start with a reverb here. Just use a stock Ableton Live reverb. Now you're gonna be careful here, just because it's a sine wave pad, you really can't hear the reverb cut through that much. So you don't want to just drastically 
you know, drenches in reverb because that's going to send the pad farther back in the mix. So just balance it out. You're gonna get more of the presence. You'll feel the pad either come closer to you or farther away with the amount of reverb. So I want it a little bit more distant, so I'll keep it around there and maybe extend the decay time as well. And since we don't have a lot of highs, we don't really have to worry about getting a lot of the, the shimmer or noise and things like that. Now, sometimes if you're trying to get more width from that pad, you might want to try layering it. So let's go ahead and layer that pad. We'll use another uh, wavetable here, same chords, but this time, instead of the sine wave, let's try using the triangle and see what we get with uh, the second oscillator set to a sawtooth. And so we'll go ahead, bring the frequency down, same thing, let's give it a nice slow attack and a long release. And let's take that first oscillator and go a whole octave lower. And this, we can create a little bit of movement. So we'll go to that sawtooth, we'll have that matrix and assign that, uh, the detuning to LFO1. And we'll go to LFO1 and just bring down the rate and the amount down. That's cool because it's adding that 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 movement in there. And then I'll hit the unison, go to shimmer, and just give some unison amount here. And we can open this up every now and then to just add some of that dynamics into the arrangement. Because so this can also be automated. We hit show automation, drag our automation points, and just bring this up and down throughout our arrangement. and bring it back down. So that second pad does add a nice textured layer to the first pad that we created. All right, next, let's go ahead and focus in on the bass. So I'm going to think of the bass in two layers. We've got the nice buzzy uh, top layer, and then we have the beefy subby bottom layer of that. So let's work on the top layer here. I'm going to use wavetable once again, and you can follow along with any two or more oscillator synth that you might have. So let's go ahead and start with a sawtooth because we want that buzzy type of sound. And let's double click and check out the bass line. And that's real close to the tone that we're looking for. So just a couple minor adjustments. Let's go from polyphonic to mono. And let's just bring the release of that down a bit. And we can just kind of take a little bit of that brightness out by bringing the cutoff frequency down. And if we go ahead and add some filter drive, that's cool. Now let's use our EQ, like I said, to help kind of divide the line between each layer. So. I don't want to use the times four slope. I want a smoother slope here. So, and we'll use just a bit of saturation. So we'll go over here to our drive, go use our saturator right after that and just drive, bring the drive up. And bring the. All right, now for the sub layer, let's just go ahead and create another MIDI track use our wavetable again, and we're gonna be focusing on the sine wave. Um, and let's just click and drag that down here. So it's the same bass line. And going from polyphonic to monophonic, tighten up the release a little bit as well. And here, let's go into our audio effects. We want uh, the amp emulation. We're gonna add some harmonics to this and I'll go to the bass modeling here. And we will go to now having um, an EQ, EQ8. And we're gonna do the same thing, but opposite direction here. We're gonna take the high end away. Okay, and if you're not hearing this off your laptop, you definitely might wanna put on some headphones because we're getting a lot of that sub-frequency low end 
or just listen to your studio monitors here. And we will get a compressor and we're going to side chain this just slightly with our kick drum. So when the kick hits, not too much, just a little bit of that. And now let's go ahead and listen to the two. So think of this top layer as a way to actually have the baseline present, especially like on laptops or um, you know small little monitors, and the bottom to really handle a lot of that low end. Now the vocals that we can hear throughout the track definitely get the spotlight and does an amazing thing in driving the overall dynamics throughout the arrangement. So I don't have that vocal, and which was feature you know which features Madeline Grant on the original one. So I figured what other tools may I have available to kind of recreate that similar vibe. And the plugin Arcade by Output uh, could be a great tool for that. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Arcade plugin by Output, it's a series of samples that are delivered to this program via an internet connection. So you're getting this refresh surplus of samples and loops that you can incorporate in your projects. You can also set the key of uh, the samples based on the project you're working on and it automatically syncs up with your tempo. So here are all these individual samples. And they also have these macro knobs here with some built-in effects that you can use to affect the overall sound. So I was just trying to find or browse through a line here that fit the best uh, vocal phrasing as possible as the reference. So this is what I have here. So, and then in order to kind of have the vocal fit in the groove as well, I have the compressor set onto this and also side chain to the kick. So let's just take a listen to see what it sounds like with everybody else. Thank you so much for watching and tuning into this video. I hope you found it helpful, inspiring, and encouraging in some way. And as my gift to you for watching, I'd love to send you a free sample pack loaded with loops, construction kits, sounds that you can use. They're 100% royalty free. That means that you can use them in your projects and share that music that you're making with the rest of the world. And it works on any DAW. Just simply click, drag and drop, and you're ready to go. And you can access uh, this Ableton Live set as well as the audio instrument that I covered at the very beginning of this video, um, that, that'll be yours for free as well. So you can access that by clicking the link below in the description box. Also, if you're looking for professional guidance to help you produce the music that you're passionate about making, I would love to provide that. So visit beatacademy.com for more information on how I can come alongside you and help you take your next step forward with your music. Once again, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can stay up to date with any upcoming videos that I might have down the road. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.